Are you aware of how much your thoughts affect every area of your life? They affect the words you speak, your moods, attitudes, your relationship with God, yourself and other people, and every decision and every behavior that you make. And no, you don't have to just think whatever falls in your head. You can do your own thinking. You know, we just wake up in the morning, the devil says, you're depressed. And you say, I'm depressed. You just get right in agreement with him. Yeah, I'm depressed, he says. It's going to be a lousy day. You get up and the first thing you say to somebody is, it's going to be a lousy day. We have to learn to recognize the lies of Satan. And to understand that, more than any other thing, he uses our mind. He lies to us. He brings deception into our lives. He tries to steal everything from us that Jesus came to give us. And we can't just sit passively by and wish we didn't feel this way and kind of hope something happens. You know, that kind of hope really isn't hope at all. Hope is expecting that something good is going to happen. It's not, well, I hope God does something. You know, the Bible says that the kingdom of God has suffered violence and the violent takes it by force. And so, we need to stop just thinking that everything good is just going to fall on us. And we need to realize that God is giving us a life plan in the Bible. He said, I am the way. And so, you might say in here is the way to live. Now, you can't avoid it. Doesn't matter if you like it or not. God's not going to change his mind. In here is the way to live. And any problem that you have, the answer to that problem is in this book, the Bible. And so we learn what's in here. And this takes time. You get better and better and better. But nobody's going to have total victory overnight. This is not a drive through breakthrough. You know, you can drive through and get just about everything today, but you cannot get a drive through breakthrough. You're going to have to go through to get the breakthroughs that you need. And changing our thinking, learning how to let the Holy Spirit show us when our thoughts are wrong, learning how to recognize the lies of Satan, and learning to think the way that God thinks about every situation is the very basic foundational thing that has to take place for any kind of real transformation in our lives. Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he said, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and you must love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said, You have answered correctly. Do this. I draw a circle around. Do this. Because see, a lot of times we know the answers, but we're not doing. If you would just even take a few minutes, sit down somewhere and think on purpose. This is one of the ways that you renew your mind, is by thinking on purpose according to the word of God. I want to walk in love today. I'm going to walk in love today. Help me Lord, walk in love today. I want to help somebody today. Let me tell you, when you start praying this every day, God, I want to help somebody today. You're going to be the busiest person you can possibly imagine. Any little thing, anything other than nothing. The one thing we cannot keep doing is nothing. Nothing is no longer acceptable. I tell you, I live an exciting life because I never know what God's going to have me do next. Do you ever feel like that you're losing your mind? Well, perhaps you are. Perhaps you've lost or given up control of your thoughts. So really when we say, I feel like I'm losing my mind, it's because we're letting the enemy do our thinking for us and he's filling our minds with worry and fear and anxiety and threats and every kind of torment. You say, well, I just don't know what to do. What can I do? Well, think something else. Think something good. Good always overcomes evil. Well, I can't help it. You know, I'm just a worrier. Well, the first thing you might do is stop saying that. Don't ever say again, I'm a worrier. Don't say that. Perhaps you've never even known that you could control your thoughts. The Bible says that God gives us beauty for ashes, that he heals the brokenhearted. Somebody's hurt you, wounded you, a broken relationship. 
Somebody did something to you that you would have never, ever, ever believed that that person would have done to you. And right now, you feel like you could never trust anybody again. Let me tell you something. Don't ever let what one or two or three or four or five mean people do to you get you into an area where you distrust every person out there. It's miserable for you and it's not fair to them. Hope is a great motivator. It's amazing. If you get out of bed hopeless, you don't want to do anything. But if you had even just a couple of drops of hope, it'll help you keep putting one foot in front of the other. It'll just help you keep going. And the devil does not want us to have hope. He wants us to be hopeless. And one of the things he wants you to think is that you've made mistakes that can never be corrected. You've messed up relationships that can never be corrected. And you've done things that can never be forgiven. You've just been sick far too long to ever really get a healing. You've had money problems for so long you've just given up and said, well, I guess I'll just always have money problems. God wants you to stir hope up in your heart again. And hope is not just, well, I hope. That's not what hope is. Bible hope is a positive expectation that something good is about to happen at any moment in my life. And you say, well, what if I go to bed tonight and nothing good happens? Well, then get up the next morning and start all over again. Let the devil know that you're not going to shut up until he goes away. You know, there are so many things we don't know. And we get so bothered by the stuff we don't know. We worry about it. We try to figure it out. We ask other people. We try our best to figure out all the things that we don't know. And most of the time, we only get ourselves more confused. In Romans 8.26, it says we don't even know how to pray as we ought to. We do not know. Everybody says we do not know. We do not know how to pray as we ought to, so the Holy Spirit comes along and prays through us with utterings and groanings that we don't even know how to hardly get out out of our mouth. We don't know. We don't even know how to pray. Our situation is so messed up, we don't even know how to pray. We don't know, but we do know that all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to His purpose. Why don't we talk more about what we do know than what we don't know? I don't know why I'm in the mess I'm in. I don't know why I was abused as a child. We know that God loves us. We know we're going to go to heaven and we're going to live for eternity. We know we're not going to hell. We know that Jesus is coming back soon and very soon. And we know that all things work out together for good. We don't know, but we do know, so why not focus more on what we do know than what you don't know? And I think you'll have a much better year. So God restores our hope. He's always ready to give us hope back. The scripture says in Romans 15, 13, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing through the experience of your faith that by the power of the Holy Spirit you will abound in hope and overflow with confidence in His promises. He is the God of hope and nobody can take your hope away from you if you won't give it up. Psalm 103, 2 through 6 Bless affectionately praise the Lord, O my soul, and don't forget all of His benefits, who forgives your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeemed your life from the pit who crowns you lavishly with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfies your years with good things so that your youth is renewed like the soaring eagle. 2 Corinthians 4.16 Therefore we do not become discouraged, spiritless, disappointed or afraid. Though our outer self is progressively wasting away, yet our inner self is being progressively renewed day by day. So what's that really telling me? That's telling me that old is an attitude more than it is a number of years. How many of you know that old is a mindset? You just keep a young mind, you keep a young soul, and actually, your body will perform better if you do that. The older you think, the older you're going to look, and the more you talk about it, the more other people are going to agree with you. So God restores our youth. God will restore everything that you have lost. Everything is everything. It's not everything except your thing, and He'll come back no matter how far away you are. He'll come back and He'll find you, and He'll collect you, 
and he'll bring you back to his heart and he'll restore everything in your life that has been broken. I think that we learn from every one of our mistakes. Every single mistake that we make, we learn from it. And that's what gives us character. When you say, I don't know how to work this out to where it makes any sense, but I actually believe that I have a better life and I'm a better person because of what I went through in the past, because it's a certainty that my future is in a better condition.